of Werewolves, episode 26, The Sound of Silence. Hey lads, could you come here for a second please? Uh, yeah, what's up? I'm not sure if my gremlin vibes are affecting the computer again, or if I'm losing my mind. You let your mind wander. I keep telling you it's too small to go out on its own. And that's five for Radisson. <laughs> are you keeping score? Wait, what am I at? Three. I got six. Six? What was the last one? When I told Fashy Pants if I wanted to hear from an asshole, I'd fart. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> anyway, speaking of hearing, did I fry the speakers because nothing comes out when I play this file, see? Move over, let me see. Positive energy cleanse. Vibrations to move stagnant energy and promote a healing atmosphere and balance the chakras. <laughs> what the fuck is this woo-woo shit? This, uh, witch, Crystal Love, might know something about what's going on. I found appointment cards and other crap the other day when, uh, Malcolm and I were looking there's nothing wrong with the speakers, it's just an mp3 of nothing. See how there's no waveform here? That means there's no real sound to it, maybe some dampened room noise. What? Uh, 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 why? Is it just me or did she just go through the five stages of grief in like a minute? The five stages of grief is a myth. Yeah, she does that sometimes when facing stupidity. <laughs> then she gets stuck on rage for a while. There are no sound waves. Even if you thought there was a special note or tone or whatever to cleanse your aura, sound waves would still have to be emitted. But you can see there are no sound waves. And people pay for this shit. Come on, the let's go get some coffee. She'll still be ranting by the time we're done. Hey, ads. Why don't you have a shadow? A spell went wrong. It should return, I think. What were you trying to do? Make a classmate sparkle. What? Like, Twilight? Sorta. Ah, one of the vampire kids? Let me guess, they're not exactly a Twilight fan. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, are you okay after the other day? Uh, what? What? Oh. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's just, you've been a little touchy lately. Hey, you want me to stop blowing up? Stop treating me like a time bomb. I will when you stop biting my head off for worrying about you. Everybody thinks they have a right to my business right now. I got a lot of shit that I ain't got words for, so yeah, I ain't talking yet. Shit takes time. You think I don't know what that's like? What with my new fashion accessories? Yeah, I do like the piercing in your left horn. Ingress do that? Yeah. Look, I'm not saying you have to do anything. I'm just saying that I might not know what's going on, but I do know you're not okay right now. And that's okay, because I'm still here for you. Even if you're being a soggy donut hole. Six. Can we please just not talk about it, though? I swear, I'm taking care of shit. I just need something in my life that hasn't been changed by it. Don't worry. I'll still kick your butt at night fight. <laughs> if only your grappling kept it up with your trash talk. Like this, it gives us all a bad name. That's it. Where's Gravedigger? I'm going out. Oh boy, where you going? To give this crystal love a piece of my mind. Sure you can afford to? Seven! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
telling people that we just need to let preventable diseases run rampant because immune systems are perfect and natural. Alternative methods should be explored. They have been throughout human history. And you know what the alternative is? The alternative is death or disability. Hey, uh, Hayes, how much caffeine have you had today? The usual, a pot. I did switch over to coffee, though. Oh, and this energy drink. Uh, oops. So, uh, most of an energy drink and a stimulant charm. Uh, yeah. Why don't you go take a nap and let me go check out this crystal love? Can't sleep. The math will eat me. I'm still working on the modeling and the experiments in the sub-basement to track... What? what? <coughs> did you just spray me with Otto's squirt bottle? We've got a patient not sleeping and overdoing it on the uppers until they're twitchy and think they're ready to go look for bioweapons. You're sitting this one out. We can't afford to lose you. I got it. What? You get hit with it and you're as weak as a human. How is that any better? What are the three symptoms of sleep deprivation? Uh, loss of fine motor skills? Mm Mm-hmm. Forgetfulness? Mm Mm-hmm. And weakened immune response. Any of that sound like you should be gathering evidence for the Enclave. Like you know what to look for, and I don't need you telling me what to do. Yeah, you forgot emotional volatility there, Doc. That's like the mermaid calling the dragon scaly. (sighs) I want to argue on principle alone, but a cogent argument requires energy. I... Don't like you going in alone, though. Julia could wear a microphone and an earpiece so you could listen in and tell him what to look for. Not a bad idea. I could live with that. The only problem is the only person who knows this spy crap is Malcolm. I could probably set up your phone and all you'd need is an earbud. (sighs) Mermaid's calling Dragon Scaly. She doesn't realize she's going down the same road as Nana. Why don't you take a look at my phone and we'll let us sleep. Hi, Hazel. I'm thinking of getting a magical tattoo, but I'm not sure what to get. Any advice? From Blank Slate. Short version. Unlike mundane body art, these can permanently alter how your corporeal body functions. So don't just pick a random design from a sample book and get a back alley stick and poke. Each one should be specifically designed for you and your needs. Long version. Competing spell types can negate each other. Physical proximity between them doesn't necessarily matter, although trying to integrate them into, say, a sleeve might alter the desired effects. And obviously, mixing two different magic systems can be disastrous if done improperly. Make sure they're registered with the Guild of Occult Practitioners and are in good standing as a physical health augmentation practitioner. If you're going for aesthetics like, say, trees or flowers that change with the season, then you're pretty safe no matter any additional work you might get or what you may practice yourself. For example, I have a little dragon that flies around my left arm and it doesn't interfere with my work. If anything, my pediatric paint... paint, (laughs) Ah! For example, I have a little dragon that flies around my left arm, and it doesn't interfere with my work. If anything, my child patients like it. Yes, well, don't let it go to your head. Ones that serve a more practical purpose, enhancements, fabrications, communications, really, the list is endless, then you have to factor in any existing enchantments, your own practice, and any future needs you might have. Magical body arts powered by your own energy. So if you have chronic fatigue, you might not want something that requires significant output. Strength boosts take more power than a purely artistic piece. Injuries can also affect the functionality of a piece. 
If you have a tattoo of a weapon that can be manifested and you're cut deep enough across the design, you can end up with a shard of blade embedded in your flesh. I know someone who has an energy bow stored in his left forearm and often wears an archer's bracer, even when it's not in use, to protect it from that exact situation. Any practitioner worth their salt will work with you to come up with something that suits you and your lifestyle. Check the show notes for a list of recommended artists. So remember, no scratching, just give it a good slap whenever it itches. Hi, Ingrid. Thanks again, Ingrid. Tell Koth I love the seaweed ale, would you? I will. You look good. And you look like crap. I heard you were in town. Took you long enough to drop by and say hi. Would you have welcomed me if I had? Before last year, yes. Now... I'm wondering what you're doing here, considering I'm surrounded by large shops of pointy objects. These designs all your work? Those ones? Yeah. It's good. I... I don't know how to ask this. It sounds crazy. But was Karina a selkie? Oh, Hazel told you. Why didn't she tell me? Why would she hide it from her own husband? You mean other than the history of your kind stealing our pelts, so we're forced to remain on land with pricks we had poor taste in sleeping with? I would never... Is that what she thought? That I'd take her pelt? You never exactly gave the impression that you wouldn't try and have her committed. If she told you, she would have shapeshifted into a seal. She could have shown me proof. She should have trusted me. That's the thing. Sometimes people we trust the most entrap us or worse. Sometimes we end up dead. But she married me. I loved her. I would have done anything for her. Wow. You're really going to make this about you, huh? She refused to trust me about something pretty crucial. I need to know why. Why marry humans if you're scared of us? Why not stick to your own kind? Wouldn't that be safer? You did end up kidnapping, imprisoning, torturing, and murdering our kind. So I say she had a pretty good instinct. I only joined Perthrow because your kind killed my wife. What? You want to know who killed Karina? Take a look in the freaking mirror, idiot. Liar. It's that stupid anti-magic field of yours. Remember how she only started getting sick when she was pregnant? With your kid? And how it only worsened the further along she was? No. Some pregnancies are harder than others. I thought that's all it was, and I wasn't around when she needed me the most. Why would she keep it if it was killing her? She thought that since she was only a Selkie and doesn't need that much magic to get by, she'd be fine. I told her she was a freaking idiot. Turns out she was sleeping with one as well. But she made her choice. She wanted a family of her own more than anything. You know that. After a while, keeping that part of yourself hidden to come across us other than what you are becomes harder and more painful. Then you think you've waited too long, and now you're going to be madder you kept a secret from them for so long. And she hated upsetting anyone, especially you. You know how we grew up. If you so much was frowned at her, it bruised her poor heart. It tore her up. Having to choose between keeping her secret or hurting you by sharing it after years of keeping it from you. I might have been angry, but I never would have hurt her or left her. She only told me how bad things were getting after she started seeing Rosemary Thornton. I blamed her. I thought she was one of those crystals and essential oil types and talked Karina out of seeing a real doctor while I was overseas and couldn't do anything. You expected Karina to trust you with her biggest secret? When you couldn't even trust her to make her own medical decisions? I shouldn't have been surprised you and Hazel know each other. You're so much alike. Yeah, but my needles are much more fun. So you're a Selkie too? Or are you a witch? I imbue tattoos with spells, but that's about it. Without the tools, prep, and ritual of it, I'm not much good at spontaneous stuff. Unless you count turning into a gray seal. 
Hmm. Karina would have been a cute seal. She was. How much magic would it take to kill several humans and shapeshifters without touching them? No prep. From a witch? Without any tools? That's not exactly common, but it's definitely possible. Wouldn't be easy. It's beyond me, but there are a few I can think of who probably could. I tend to focus on cool tricks and protective stuff. But Cove used to be a bounty hunter, so he might know more than me. Bounty hunter, huh? Explain some of the tricks he's learned. I hadn't realized how much I missed sparring with him. Didn't realize you were a masochist, but I'm sure he's happy to oblige. Yeah, I saw his shifting ability the other day. It was... startling. Oh, the look on your face must have been priceless. So what is he? That's not a polite question to ask. It's a lot like asking someone what's in their pants, or kind of both in Ko's case. Ah. Doesn't sound like anyone sat you down and giving you the Miss Manners for Monsters talk yet. Come on. You're going to buy me a beer, and I'm going to teach you not how to ask people to out themselves, when they might need stealth for survival. The Crystal Den? Oh. I feel like I'm in a sad beige nightmare and I'm here all garish in my black clothes and green skin. Truly, your flamboyant aesthetic knows no bounds. You two are like at the exact opposite end of the spectrum from sad beige. Says you who thinks glitter is a color. One for both of you. Ha! I'm ahead! Come on, I'm falling asleep here. I'm going, I'm going. Hi, you must be Julia. I'm Crystal. Hey. Come on back. That's a lot of vitamins. Oh yeah, it's so much better to treat the whole body and maintain overall health. Please, have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. Do you want a charcoal and basil infused lemonade? Uh-uh. Charcoal counteracts medications? N no thanks, I'm good. You're here for a massage and an access bars session, right? Okay, I'm just looking over your intake form here to get an idea of your state of being. Oh, it says your sex is female. I'm so supportive of gender non-conforming women. I offer a pelvic care course. You see, as women, our womb space is the core of our being and holds the stories of our foremothers. By cleansing the womb space, you make way for the life you will gestate and birth. I have a uterus, true. A woman ain't what I am, or gender non-conforming. I define myself by who I am, not what some white Christianized wannabe would classify me as. I ain't ruled by what's between my legs, and my history is written in my heart, my soul, and the scars of my knuckles. Wow. She and I have very different relationships with our uteruses. I, for example, don't see myself as a uterus with legs. You've got some very negative energy. I need some sage to cleanse the space because you're clearly in need of some soul work. Yeah, sage is a uh, cultural appropriation. Use something less racist. It'll work better. I swear I'm taking psychic damage here. Oh, great. Now I get to snoop around. Yeah, maybe it's a good thing you went instead of me. My head would have exploded. Ooh, what's in the fridge? You're snooping around and you stopped to check in the fridge? Just making sure there's nothing useful in here. Actually, no, wait. That's a good idea. Oh. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. A parent. Uh, she's into urine therapy. I don't know what that is, but I do know those are two words that probably don't belong together. Yeah, and she's taken physician heal thyself to heart. I could have quite happily lived the rest of my life without ever having had this conversation, but no. We truly live in the worst of all possible worlds. You should look for... Lots of little vials with the perthro rune on them. A bit on the nose, but sure, anything like that. Yeah, this crystal ain't too bright. 
More like granite love. <laughs> <laughs> Label says it's for intravenous vitamin therapy. She objects to vaccines, but happily sources IV vitamins from personal... Ow! Oh, no. Big scary pharma until they slap a fucking rune on it and call it fucking wellness boosters or some shit. Says it's wellness enhancing. I think I now have more empathy for Nana's drinking. Yeah, grab some carefully. She's not certified to run blood tests to check vitamin levels, so it sounds like she's just opening them up and letting them rip, which would be a surefire way of distributing a significant viral load. Yoink. What are you doing? Confiscating a couple of these vials for testing against the sickness that's killing folks. Take it up with the Enclave if you got a problem. You have no right to take those vitamins. I'm not practicing magic either, so neither the Enclave or Goop have a right to come in here. Do you even know what's in here? You're certain that these are only vitamins from the same company that was experimenting on and killing our own kind? You're just targeting me because I'm a threat to traditional witches. Threat to my blood pressure. Oh, don't even pull that shit on me. See these photos? That's a corpse. I do not consent to seeing a corpse. Use a trigger warning next time. I didn't hear this guy consent to a wasting death, but go off. Actually, no, don't. I ain't got no time for your brain of nonsense. People are dying out there, and if this is what I think it is, you're gonna have the Grand Council of Elders so far up your ass you'll be flossing with white hair. Toodles, you wackadoodle. Thank you for listening. Today's episode was written and performed by Brenna Anderson Dowd as Hazel, Frederick Elmore as Julia, Taryn Baldwin as Addison, Tabitha McNeil as Ingrath, Keith Baldwin as Malcolm, and A.J. McConnell as Crystal Love. Sound design by Frederick Elmore. Music by Kevin Elmore. Find us on Facebook at Care and Feeding of Werewolves, Tweet us at Care Werewolves or email us at feedingwerewolves at gmail.com. Please rate and review. Care and Feeding of Werewolves is a podcast distributed by Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions and licensed under a Creative Commons non commercial attribution share alike 4.0 International. All content on the Care and Feeding of Werewolves podcast is fictional and for entertainment purposes only. Content is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your doctor or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of an episode. Reliance on any information provided by Care and Feeding of Werewolves, Kerfuffle and Chaos Productions, or anyone involved with the production of this podcast is solely at your own risk. I'm sorry, keeping stories up in your uterus? I don't know about you, but I sure as fuck don't have a library up in there. Like, lady, you and I have vastly different experiences as womb wielders and... (laughs) 